Hey guys, my name is Max. I'm an application engineer here at UMAX, and today we're going to be doing a guide on how to use the Einscan HX scanner. This guide will be a little bit longer than our usual videos because there's a lot to cover, so let's just get right into it. First thing we're going to do is unpack our scanner. Plug the forked side of the data cable into the scanner. Then plug the USB end into your computer. Then plug the power adapter into the power outlet. Then plug it into the power port of the data cable. You should see the scanner light up. Install the software located on the USB drive, or more ideally, just download it from the official website. Now let's talk about calibration. Calibration with the HX for the first time will begin with the standard calibration. There is also a quick calibration that can be used afterwards. You should calibrate whenever you move workstations, bump the scanner, notice oddities with scanning, or just feel like the performance is lacking. If quick calibration ever fails, you will have to do the standard calibration again. Let's set up by propping up the calibration board on the pattern shown on the guiding sheet. Make sure it's sanding on the side with the rectangles down. Keep the scanner aimed at the center of the board at the angle shown on screen. Press the play button on the scanner to begin calibration. Pull the scanner in and out until you've lit up all the squares on the screen. You will repeat this through all the steps, holding the scanner at different angles as indicated on screen. After that, we will calibrate the lasers. Flip over the board to the white side. Hold the scanner parallel to the board and press play. Raise and lower the scanner until you've lit up all the squares on the screen. This step requires a slow and steady hand. After that, we just have the white balance calibration. This is just like the laser calibration, except instead of lighting up all the squares, you just find your way to the one in the middle and hold it steady. And that's it. We are done with calibration. Now, let's set up our first project. We're going to start with laser scanning. I'll make a new project. For project settings for laser mode, we just have resolution. Be wary that maxing this out causes very high RAM slash VRAM usage. I would recommend adjusting this down for larger objects, unless you have very impressive hardware. Here in the scanning UI to the left, we have many options we can tweak. Scan mode simply lets us enter a mode in which we can only scan for markers, not picking up any data. This can be useful for techniques such as digital assembly and capturing markers before we start a large scan to ensure smooth scanning without any hiccups. Marker files generated from this can even be saved and loaded into projects using open global markers right here. Next, we have our object surface mode, which will help the scanner scan objects with its respective surface type. Brightness will control the brightness of our lasers. Generally, we want to auto adjust this by pressing this button here. When we start scanning later, it will adjust the brightness automatically. However, if adjusting manually, just ensure that you can clearly see the lasers without overdoing it or creating laser reflections if applicable to your surface. Brightness can be controlled mid-scan with the left and right buttons on the scanner. The up and down buttons control the zoom. Optimized point clouds will increase accuracy at the cost of processing times. This is recommended for scans larger than 800 millimeters. Local and large view will provide an alternative way to view your subject while scanning. Finally, data setting is a slider that will trade capturing more data for increased noise or vice versa. Integrity priority is the best for black and reflective surfaces. Now let's begin scanning. Remember that your scanner should be able to see at least four markers at all times, or else you will lose tracking. Also, while the HX can see both 6 and 3 millimeter markers, it recognizes the 6 millimeter ones much easier, so keep this in mind when choosing your markers. Press the play button to begin preview mode. If you have auto exposure on, hold the scanner still, aiming at your subject until the brightness has been set automatically. Once you're in a good starting position, press the play button again to begin scanning. Make sure to keep an eye on the distance indicator to the left of the screen to make sure you aren't too close or too far from your subject. The colors on the scanner itself will also indicate your distance. When going around sharp corners, make sure to go slow and steady and keep your distance. Once we have everything we need from this angle, we can press the play button to pause and move our subject. Then we can continue from our new angle. Make sure to start from a part of the object that you have already scanned. 
Now that we're done with that, let's talk about data editing. When we aren't scanning, we can make changes to our data using the tools at the bottom of the screen. I like to use the lasso tool to select data I don't want and delete it. To do this, select the tool and hold shift and drag. The other selection tools work in a similar way. There is also connected domain, which will select all data connected to the data currently selected. This is very useful for selecting entire objects easily, then inverting the selection and deleting all the garbage data. There is also a cutting plane tool, which will create a flat plane either by drawing a line, selecting data, or selecting markers. Drawing a line, selecting data, and markers are all controlled by shift dragging, of course, or shift clicking. This plane will automatically delete any data under it and can even be kept around to automatically not capture any data under it while scanning as well. This plane can also be deleted or moved as you like. When we're done editing our data, we can press the check mark to confirm our edits, or if we made a mistake, we can press X. We could spend a little bit more time making this scan look better as we're missing some parts, but let's just say that we're happy with this. Let's move on and generate point clouds by pressing the square button. This will give us a better idea of what our object might look like when it's a mesh. We can still continue scanning or editing data after this if we desire. If not, and we like how it looks, we can move on to meshing. Press this button down here and we will be brought to the meshing settings. Here we can choose from watertight or unwatertight. Watertight will seal any holes in the mesh, making it a solid unbroken object with a measurable volume. Unwatertight will leave it how it is, holes and all. We will choose unwatertight as we have very large holes and gaps in our data that won't fill very well. There are many settings here that will perform some type of filtering, smoothing, or simplification. Most are very self-explanatory, but they all have tooltips if you want a detailed description of their function. Usually, recommended settings is what I recommend and go with. You can always remesh if you don't like the result, but if you do, press confirm to move on to post-processing. Here, we have many tools we can use, much like the meshing settings. All these tools are reversible, so feel free to experiment. I find that hole filling is a very useful tool myself, where once we have the tool selected, we can click on the highlighted borders of holes to fill them. Once we're done, we can save our mesh in the file type of our choice, or directly export it to a program. Under measurement, we can also use the measurement tools. Like many things in the software, these measurement tools are controlled by shift clicking or shift dragging. We can measure distances between points, surface area of selected areas, and volume if we have a watertight mesh. Another useful feature we can find in measurement mode is the ability to line or scan at any coordinate on the XYZ axes. In other words, we can move and rotate our object relative to world coordinates. Select movement right here, enter the desired values, and then click move. This can be very useful for centering our scan before exporting for additional post-processing or reverse engineering. Now let's take a look at the LED scanning mode. Using the LED scanning mode is very similar for the most part. Our project settings will have a few more things we can tweak, including whether or not we want to use texture, our alignment mode, and of course resolution. Let's talk about alignment mode. Alignment mode is how we will maintain tracking while scanning. With the laser mode, we can only use markers, which is why there's no option to change our alignment mode. But here, we can use features, markers, hybrid, which is both, or texture. I usually recommend hybrid, because while feature tracking is great, it can get confused with symmetrical geometry or patterned exteriors. So having the option of adding markers on problem areas is quite nice. Texture alignment can be useful too if your texture is unique and varied enough but most of the time, hybrid is going to be the play. It should be noted that when relying on feature alignment, your object should have plenty of distinguishable geometric features. Besides that, everything is pretty much the same as far as UI and controls. You want to pay extra attention to your brightness, as it's very important for being able to efficiently scan with LED mode. When adjusting, make sure that there's only a little bit of redness shown in the camera window when looking at your subject. Now everything here is pretty much the same as in the last mode, but there's one thing I want to show you guys. Project groups and group alignment can prove to be a useful tool when working with larger objects or certain objects that are difficult to scan. Here I will scan half of this large object, generate point clouds, and then select the project group tab. I'm going to make a new group with the same settings. Now we have what can be thought of as a new folder for scanning, or perhaps a sub project if you like. Now in this group, we will scan the other half making sure to include some of the area we scanned in the first group. 
as this is how we're going to align them together. Two groups without any common data whatsoever cannot be aligned together. Generate point clouds when we are done. And we can press this button here to align them together. Select the project groups here to assign them to their respective windows. Then on the bottom, we can see a preview of the alignment result. We have four methods of alignment. We can manually select three pairs of shared points using, you guessed it, shift clicking. Or we can manually select shared markers the same way. If we rather handle things automatically, we can choose automatic marker and feature alignment. If the result looks good, we can exit to move on or try another method if it doesn't. Now, when we mesh, the groups will be merged into one correctly aligned object. All right, that's about it for this guide. Let us know in the comments if there's anything else you wanna know about using your HX scanner. And thanks for watching.